Welcome again for the other class session and this time we are talking about uh, types of computer. We covered of uh, the first class and this time we are talking about different types of computer. Lesson 2. We already talked about what is a computer. That's a data processing, electronic data processing machine. And this time we are talking about uh, types of computers. And we can notice that there are so many types of computer. And the first type of a computer is a supercomputer. Now the supercomputers come in different types, but uh, we don't have them. This is one of the most, the biggest computer, the most powerful, the most expensive. Supercomputers are of the fastest, the most expensive uh, computers in the world. The supercomputers, they cost uh, uh, several hundred millions of uh, money and uh, they are owned by big institution and um, uh, like military uh, uh, military uh, big university uh, big and uh, very powerful universities um, organizations higher big organizations they own uh, those uh, kind of computers and uh, supercomputers usually need to be uh, meant uh, in its own room they need the separate uh, standby generator in case power goes off they they have to have uh, a backup of which uh, automatically won't leave the computer to be off you definitely have an email or a website and you usually run it from either a mainframe or a supercomputer somewhere in the world and that's why you can access your email wherever you are now uh, the other type of a computer are the mainframe computers. Now these mainframe computers in uh, one way or the other these are different from the supercomputer. Now the mainframe computers are smaller compared to uh, supercomputers and they are a bit cheaper compared to supercomputer but still they are not for personal use and so that is the second type of computer. The third type of computer uh, is a personal computer. If we were to, to talk about uh, where a mainframe can be used for, the mainframe are use, used in uh, banks, uh, utility companies, like uh, so many companies that you know. Even police can also be using mainframe to record different crimes and uh, insurance companies can also use uh, mainframes. And that's why you can run your account from any place in the country and out of the country still your data will always be updated those are uh, friends uh, who use whatever bank that you're using whether sierra db nmb nbc uh, and other banks you can notice that if you deposit your money to the teller then you can take it even uh, in, uh, in the atm right away and you'll find that uh, the information will be uh, uh, always updated now in most cases when they tell you there's no network that means they cannot be able to connect with the mainframe. But uh, unless the is uh, usually everything has to run from a mainframe. So that is um, a second type of computer. The third type of computer I've said uh, are the personal computer or the micro computers. And personal computers, PC. Every time you have heard people, do you have a PC? Can I have your PC? What is a PC? A PC stands for personal computer. These are microcomputers. They are microcomputers. Now, desktop, laptop, tablets, PDAs are all falling under PC, like microcomputers. These are smallest, meant for small offices, personal use, school, university, and so on. And uh, the microcomputers, these, um, these personal computers, can be useful in many ways. You can use it to type your notes, save your reports, uh, prepare a, uh, a presentation, uh, move with it, and many more activities. Now, something that we need to notice here is that um, there has been changes, and uh, uh, with these changes in technology, battery life has been improved. At least. Uh, a desktop computer you cannot be able to move with it but a laptop computer 
like this one, you can be able to move with it. And with uh, the improvement in the, in, uh, in the technology, uh, laptops and desktop are no longer that expensive. Long before you could buy a computer at a million or two million so and so. But nowadays you can even buy a brand new computer with just a half a million. And uh, I would encourage you to buy a second hand computer. But rather go buy original, buy a brand new. You know, there's a challenge that uh, in most cases if you buy second hand computers, uh, it's more likely that you're going to take garbage. Hmm? All this gold, but when it comes to technology, all this garbage. Now, with uh, the space and better life, you can still be able to move with your computer for a long period of time. And uh, the portability, uh, like a laptop, you can be able to move with it for a long period of time and still have uh, the best services. Now, uh, with changing on life patterns or working uh, life patterns, a, a, a laptop is more portable, a desktop is meant to be used in an office or at home, and uh, a, t a, a tablet can be held, you can hold it and even work with it in hand. It's very difficult for you to sit in, uh, in, uh, in school and carry your desktop with you. It's very difficult. It's almost impossible. And uh, likewise, it's very awkward for you to sit in a daladala and with your laptop. But you can be able to use a tablet probably and still solve your problem or your crisis or whatever it is that you want to do it. And still, because, and still have a benefit because uh, it is more beneficial, more portable, and more easier to operate. The last one is the embedded computer. The embedded computers are these types of computers that are usually incorporated in other machines. Uh, for instance, uh, embedded computers are incorporated in a washing machine, in um, uh, microwaves, in fuel dispensers. They have both uh, um, uh, several parts of uh, a computer, but they are meant for dedicated, uh, dedicated activities. For instance, uh, a computer must have an input and the military computer will have an input as well and uh, you have ever gone to a petrol station a uh, fuel dispenser is there and uh, you can notice that if you are buying fuel you can simply give your money there they put the amount of money in to calculate the, the fuel and they can control the fuel now because there's an input there, a keyboard there's also an input there a monitor or a screen uh, particularly that it's a screen and there's a, a storage over there and the other parts like a CPU, RAM and so, so and so and in that sense do you think that's a computer now of which you can now sit and say oh please can I type my notes over there and use a fuel, fuel dispenser in a petrol station to type your notes impossible you can't be able to do that but rather you can be able to uh, do something else like uh, let's say uh, sell fuel because that's dedicated for that the same applies to other 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 devices in our home which have embedded computers incorporated with it they help to simplify and support your work in a short given time within the given range of expected needs but they cannot be able to do multiple activities with a personal computer or microcomputer, you can type notes, you can print, you can listen to music, and so on. Now, most of us have uh, a tendency of using a computer for one activity. To some people, computer is just for typing notes. You're just using a computer like a typewriter. To some people, a computer is just meant for social network. Why don't you buy a phone? That's, that will be enough. To some people, a computer is just limited to playing music. A DVD player will be more useful to you rather than a computer. And to others, probably they only use a computer to play games. You could save your cost and buy just a, a whatever type of game playing and even, even a, a mobile phone would that help. Why should you cost yourself and buy a computer a comp and still you 
minimally or underutilized that computer. And so, I can say that uh, with this kind of life pattern, there's a lot you can be able to sell and help by using a computer and uh, different types of computer can be useful, but we all use uh, microcomputers, desktop, laptop, tablets and others below that. But the others are meant for institutions. And so those are a list you have been able to notice that uh, in this second session or second lecture we have uh, the types of computer. In the first class we discussed about what is a computer and what makes a computer. And in this class we have discussed on briefly on different types of computer. Now in the coming lecture, in the coming lesson, sorry, we will cover something else. And that will be the parts of computer. So don't leave me and join me in the next session or in the next class of which uh, we can be able to cover together different parts of a computer. 